understanding the basics of an options contract is important when you're making investment and trading decisions. And these components include the option type, the underlying asset, a strike price, expiration date, and premium. So underlying asset, this is just the financial security that the option is based on and it determines its trade value, the strike price. This indicates the fixed price at which the option can be exercised and significantly influences the potential profitability of that option. We have option type, and that's generally a call option, which grants the right to buy the underlying asset, or a put option, which grants the right to sell it. And the premium, this is the cost you'll pay of purchasing an option, and it reflects the buyer's maximum risk. And it consists of intrinsic value and extrinsic value. And each of these represents potential profit based on the market conditions. So let's look at two primary types of options. So it's a call option and a put option. And these form the foundation of various trading strategies in the options market. So a call option gives you the right to buy the underlying asset at the strike price, but you're not obligated to do it. And call options become valuable when that market price is higher than the strike price. That allows you to buy the underlying asset at a lower price. Put options. This gives you the right, but not the obligation, to sell the underlying asset at the strike price. And these gain value when the market price drops below the strike price. Enables you to sell at the higher agreed upon price. Now, each of these carries unique risks, unique rewards, with call options benefiting from a rising market and put options providing a hedge against declining markets. So let's say you hold a call option for XYZ company and it has a strike price of 50 bucks. The market goes up to 60 bucks. Well, you can buy the shares at $50 and you can sell them at the higher market price and that's where you realize a profit. Now, options contracts all share one important characteristic. They have an expiration date after which they become worthless if not exercised. So this makes it important to understand the rules surrounding expiration and exercising the option. Now, American options, which we generally trade, these can be exercised at any time before expiration. European options, well, these can only be exercised on the expiration date itself. As the expiration date approaches, the value of your option generally decreases due to what we call time decay. So if you're a buyer, you're only going to lose the premium that you paid if your option expires worthless. But as a seller, you will face a potential obligation at expiration. Depends on the market movement if the buyer exercises the option. So exercising an option, really, it's only advantageous when the underlying assets market condition favor you relative to the strike price. Now, the price of an options contract it reflects not only the underlying assets market value, but also the potential for future price movements. We have intrinsic value. This is the difference between the underlying assets current market price and the strike price for in the money options. So here's an example. Let's say you have a call option for ABC company. Strike price is hundred bucks. Well, the current market price of ABC company is 115 bucks. The intrinsic value of your call option is calculated as the current market price minus the strike price, which is $15. The extrinsic value, this accounts for the time remaining until expiration and the volatility of the underlying asset. As an expiration date approaches, the time value decreases and that impacts the overall pricing of the option as well. There's less time left on the contract implied volatility. This plays a huge role in determining option prices. If market conditions suggest greater price fluctuations, you're going to pay a higher premium for that option. And market conditions, factors like supply and demand dynamics, economic events, overall market sentiment, all of these can affect the bid and ask price of a contract. So you got to understand these factors and it's going to help you make better decisions. Let's touch on the Greeks. These are risk metrics that provide insights into how different factors affect the price of an options contract. 
We have Delta. This measures the sensitivity of an option's price to changes in the price of the underlying asset. We have Gamma. That indicates the rate of change of Delta with respect to changes in the underlying asset's price. Theta. This represents the time decay of an option, shows how much the option's price decreases as it approaches expiration. We have Vega. This measures the sensitivity of an option's price to changes in the volatility of their underlying asset. And then we have Rho. Reflects the sensitivity of an option's price to changes in interest rates. So you understand these metrics can help you manage risk and make more informed trading decisions. We have implied volatility and historical volatility. Now, volatility is an important factor in pricing and trading strategies. There are two main types. We have implied volatility. This is the market's forecast of a likely movement in the underlying assets price. We have historical volatility. This measures the actual past volatility of the underlying asset over a specific period. So it provides a baseline for comparing current implied volatility. So let's say a stock has historical volatility of 20%, but the options market is pricing an implied volatility of 30%. Well, that suggests that traders expect more significant price movements in the future. Open interest and volume. These are essential indicators of market activity and liquidity. Open interest represents the total number of outstanding options contracts that have not been settled. Volume is just the number of options contracts that are traded during a specific period. So if you see a sudden spike in volume at a specific strike price and expiration date, well, that might indicate that traders are positioning for a significant move in the underlying asset. There's a whole bunch of different strategies as well. We have covered calls, that just where you hold a long position in an asset, but you sell call options on the same asset to make money, it's an income. You have a protective put. This is where you buy a put option to hedge against potential losses in a long position. So you own stock, you buy a put option to hedge against the downside. We have straddles. This is buying both a call and a put option with the same strike price and expiration date. We have iron condors. This just involves selling a lower strike put and a higher strike call while buying an even lower strike put and an even higher strike call. Sounds confusing, of course, but as you get more involved in options trading, it'll make more sense. So when you understand these strategies and when to apply them, it can improve your ability to handle different market environments. Here's some questions that we usually get asked. Can I buy options on any underlying asset? Well, the answer is no, because not all assets have options available. Typically, options are available for stocks, indices, commodities, and currencies. So just check with your brokerage to see what they have available. How do options trading commissions affect your cost? Well, it's going to impact your profit. These fees include a per contract fee, a base fee, and these are all going to vary by your broker. Just consider these costs when you're calculating your break-even point on your contract. Can I sell an options contract before the expiration date? Absolutely, you can sell it before the expiration date. It's going to allow you to capitalize on the current market condition and either realize a profit or minimize your losses. The fact is only about 10% of all contracts are actually exercised anyways. Most are unloaded prior to the expiration date to take their profits or mitigate a loss. And what happens if the underlying asset price matches the strike price? Well, when that happens, your option is at the money. There's not much intrinsic value at all. You're not going to profit from exercising the option. And you may choose just to let it expire worthless, losing only the premiums that are paid. So I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of some important components in an options contract and in the options market. We'll expand on these in a future video.